In this video, I will primarily be focusing on introducing our two new genera of ant from the tribe Ponorini to this channel's existing colonies. Real quick, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in this past year. The channel has reached a grand milestone of 10,000 views. Let's start with the bad news. Only one day after they were looking so healthy, they had passed away. There are many reasons an ant queen might pass away, and sometimes there's nothing you can do to prevent it. Factors such as disturbing a colony too frequently or maintaining a temperature unsuitable to their species could contribute. In the end, I'd like the takeaway from my channel to be to learn from me, not to be like me. On the positive side, the day we lost our two Fidoli queens, while I was observing what type of ants I had in my yard, I came across this tiny surprise. Four millimeters to be exact. I'd found an either delay or ergotoid hyperpanera queen. An ergotoid queen is a permanently wingless reproductive adult ant. From there on, it's a race to find a suitable setup where she can feel comfortable. Hyperpanera is mostly a semi-colostral genus, so once she's settled in, I will provide her with the smallest of outlets for her to forage in. During these stressful times, I've made sure that she's had her fill of honey. I started with housing her in a small test tube of sand, but I eventually moved her into a small glass bottle. I left her alone for over a day, but this is as much as she ended up digging out. I ended up taking another day to figure out what type of setup would best suit her. In the meantime, let me introduce you to our new purchased colony, clearly eager to venture out of their test tube, pulling at the cotton ball. This colony is of the genus Ostropanera, the larger cousin of Hyperpanera, containing one queen and around 30 workers. I first attempted to house them in a standard tubs and tubes setup. I took out the cotton ball, and then in no time at all, they sprawled out of the test tube. They had around 30 workers, but I was still surprised to see how many workers that sent out into the field. They were quick to accept my first protein offering, a small spider. They appeared to be quite eager for the sugar from the manuka honey I provided them as well. In my goal to provide them with a nest best suited to their needs, I connected an Oz Ant's white hole nest to their setup. With the entrance to this new nest up too high, I needed to provide a method of access to it, introducing the very short lived centipede stairs. When taking a closer look at their larvae, they appear to be quite spiky. I'm guessing it could be to help them spin the cocoons in the future. In the end, I ended up deciding that their current tubs and tube setup might not be the best suited for them. Introducing their final setup as of now. With a makeshift vinyl tube connector, they have access to their test tube, the white on nest, and a small outworld. So far, they have adapted quite well to this setup. After providing a couple pieces of meal and a boiled egg, I was now able to not disturb them unless I was feeding them in their outworld. Back to our Hyperpanera queen, I wedged two pieces of bark into a test tube. Not long after introducing her to it though, she was missing. After finding her, I was glad that she had found her safe place to call home, where she will be undisturbed for a week. While providing her with a bit of egg as protein, she had made her appearance. She was quick to try to figure out why I was once again disturbing her. She was clearly on alert after my last intrusion, but it wasn't long before she found this bit of protein to investigate. To my surprise, she decided to pick up the whole chunk and move it away to a more suited place to start breaking it down. As soon as I stopped filming though, she was quick to break off a small piece of the egg to take away. With that, 
she won't be disturbed for a week to let her settle in. Then I will provide her with a small outworld for her semi-colostral needs. I decided that this new pest tube setup could suit our Rick Tog Nathus Queen too. After supplying her with honey and protein, she too will be left undisturbed for a week. Thank you for watching till the end, it means a lot. I hope you will look forward to the next update where you meet another new queen which I caught today.